What's up everybody, Brian Tong here and I am here in Cupertino, California outside of the Apple Visitor Center right behind me because I just got a chance to go back inside to Apple Park because I got to check out the Apple Vision Pro for the third time. That's kind of crazy to think but I've been able to really learn, observe and I've got a whole lot of new information for you all that I took away from that experience and the reason why I'm here is because we're here to talk all about spatial video. Now we know that iOS 17.2 just released for the general public so all of you have it but if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or an iPhone 15 Pro Max you're going to be able to record spatial video which is that 3D immersive video from Apple that you can then view in the future on an Apple Vision Pro when the headset comes out sometime in a early 2024. We obviously don't know exactly the date, but I got an experience, you know, I recently went out to Hawaii. I shot a lot of different environments. I shot food, I shot family, just to kind of really push the limitations and see, okay, what is this capable of and how do I have to think differently when recording spatial video? Now, the quick thing to note, it is a 1080p, 30 frames per second video, it's taking two streams of video, recording them at the same time from the wide and ultra wide lens up here that are aligned now vertically on the side. So when you turn it this way, you'll see them here. It does auto color correction so that the ultra wide and the wide basically match each other and then it records the left eye and the right eye. Now, you do have to turn this feature on. Um, it's not turned on by default. So what you wanna do is you go into your settings and then you go into the camera option, then find formats and from there, what you'll do is you'll find, scroll down a little more, spatial video for Apple Vision Pro. You're gonna to wanna to turn that on. And what that allows you to do now is if you go into your camera app, you're gonna see there's a icon on the bottom left-hand corner, um, whether you're holding it vertically, and you'll see it, it looks like an icon of the Apple Vision Pro with like a slash across it. If you tap that, it turns yellow, it asks you to rotate your phone in landscape mode, and then this will allow you to record spatial video again, 1080p, 30 frames per second, and it's only in landscape mode. And that's how you do it, right? Again, you will store all these files on your phone. Um, they will take up more space because it's recording two streams of video at once, but it's packing it all together in this HEVC file. Because we don't all have Apple Vision Pro, at least what you'll be able to see on your phone, it'll, it'll be completely flat, but that is gonna be the stream from the wide lens camera recording. But again, that file stores all that information and it's gonna be a little bigger in size. Now let's talk about what this phone can do because I think what's really cool is with spatial video, I didn't know how close I could get, how fast I could move. And I can tell you that it's more versatile than I thought, but also there are limitations. So one of the things that you probably have already done because many of you have this is there's a part where if you're moving up close to something like a flower or a piece of food, it'll actually give you a, a warning on screen that says move further away. And the thing that I noticed about that is it's kind of almost a preemptive warning of not to get too close so that what you're trying to focus on gets blurry. So as long as it still looks in focus on the screen here, it's gonna look great. And I tried this out with food like the PP Kalu ribs over at Helena's in Oahu. Uh, this instantly on all the dishes, the, the Kalua pork, the freaking yellowtail collar, and it's, it's in 3D and it looks so good and so yummy it really does take you back there there was like a mango dessert that i tried out with my wife shauna and you can also do really cool things like don't do any like quick motion but just do a nice like a nice slow pan side to side nice slow push-ins um and it is 1080p 30 frames per second the image you know the frame rate won't break down when it's not fast motion and i think foodies are gonna really love this and you can get really close i even Took, did this perspective, I had this bag of malasadas, which is like the fried dough with the sugar on it, and this is a uh, halpia cream filling. And I took my camera and I just basically kind of gave it a perspective, like jump inside of that bag, and you can see the grains of sugar in spatial video, and it looked, it really looked awesome. So I think you can have a lot of creative ways to play around with up close shots, not macro shots, but good up close shots to give you variation um, when you're using this camera. Also, People is really fun. I, I didn't have any, I wasn't gonna try and force people to kind of do any type of testimonials or messages, but I think honestly in Christmas, I'm gonna have my family members, and I'm just gonna record them in spatial video, talk about you know maybe what they're thankful for, or what they're looking forward to, and this is gonna be like a time capsule because I'm telling you, the spatial video that I've seen with people just like kind of talking in camera, it, it, it feels different. I know the word immersive sounds silly, but I think it's gonna be, again, I said this in my previous video, really emotional. It's really gonna grab you and it's gonna take you back to these moments if these are people that are no longer with us or relatives you haven't seen in a long time um, or loved ones 
it's gonna do, it's gonna do something to us, and I think that is powerful in its own way. So spatial video looks great there. Now, other things that I noticed, if you do a lot of uh, wide shots of, let's say, like buildings or landscapes or environments, you really don't get the 3D. You don't really get that forced perspective or that 3D shot as much. It you kind of need things in the foreground and then things in the background to take advantage of this and really kind of force that perspective. So, you know, I had a shot of even like Hanauma Bay. Only when I when I showed kind of an earlier shot of some of the branches and the bushes as I raised my camera up to reveal the bay, you could see, you could see the detail in the perspective there. That was cool. But you know, I even did a wide shot of like the Malasada truck. You didn't really see too much of uh, the depth of the depth of the different. You know, maybe a little bit of the hoods of the windows. But again, you know, when you have kind of medium shots of people, you don't want to cut their heads off. You want to kind of keep them all in frame, at least their heads and their arms. That that really comes up nice. Tight shots of my mom eating food. I could see her fingers like digging in to those ribs. That was really cool. I did, you know, chop off the top of her hair there. But um, though environments, you kind of want to create shots that at least create a different depth of field. But it's very good. It goes about, I feel like it gives you about maybe four or five steps of depth. A lot of times 3D in the past has been very just like kind of like something in the front, something in the back. You really get a lot of depth here. This surfboard shot that I did. The surfboard's coming at us. I know you're looking at it flat. It's coming at me. I'm moving around it. You can even see like the depth of the sand and the board and things like that just look really cool and really pop with spatial video. Now, the other thing that you need to keep in mind is there is another warning that happens, or not warning, but uh, it tells you in dark situations, it says more light recommended. It'll even show it to you. And I still ignored that. I still shot a bunch of spatial video. But what that's trying to tell you is, look, if it's a little too dark, and this is you know kind of semi dim lighting to very dark the image is going to break down it's going to look grainy and just know that going in that you really want just a well evenly lit in uh, subject and environment to get the best photo so dark environments you can still see the 3d effect like this this uh the shrimp from bavel this awesome restaurant in la you can still see like the the you know the greens the detail and the depth of that but you know sometimes the image can get a little grainer even shots with me and my wife together you could see where the grain was when it got darker so those are just kind of some of the limitations to be aware of i did some walking shots from behind um shauna walking through like this this pathway where it's really green you could see the detail of the different plants and then even a shot of me walking towards her and you got all these surfboards if you can create really dynamic shots that have depth you're going to really have a fun time uh, with spatial video so it was really cool and then i think maybe a sleeper feature here is not even just spatial video um, because we've talked about that a lot panoramas oh my gosh panoramas okay if you haven't taken them in a while start taking them because we know the quality of these cameras continue to get better panoramas on apple vision pro look so so good um and i would say the key thing is take as much as you possibly can because the wider the panorama the more it wraps around you and when you view them on apple vision pro it just like puts you right in there you sink it you soak it all in and uh it was very cool so look spatial video again 15 pro 15 pro max start recording it have fun experimenting it, but I would say, you know, any type of fast motion, if you have like a flying bird, or if you're even trying to, you know, run and really move your camera and pan it really fast, the the frame the frames are gonna break down a little bit. So I would recommend against more, you know, steady subjects, slow pans, slow pushes. You can do walking and talking. That actually works pretty well as long as the subject is is kind of right in the middle, even a framed like me a little wider. But any type of fast motion, it's just not gonna translate as well with spatial video. So it was fun jumping in there, um, and I and now let's get, kind of talk about the actual experience that I had because I learned a few new things about the Apple Vision Pro. So I got to try on the hardware. It is the same physical hardware that I had before. We also know that Apple released the seventh version of Vision OS for developers, but I asked Apple directly. They wouldn't tell me what it was, but the version of the OS that I used was a newer version beyond what the developers have. So the demos that we had was the most latest and greatest internal build of Vision OS that we got to play with. Now let's talk about some hardware, some new things that I learned. We know that this Apple Vision Pro uses basically a utility to scan your face to give you the best sizing option for this thing called the light seal, right? That's that piece that's right in the front that you put against your face and then blocks out any light from leaking in and allows you to have an immersive experience. It's made up of two parts. There's the light seal, which is that bigger, 
thicker kind of like lighter gray part with the knitted material and then you have the light seal cushion which is the part that really presses directly against your face. Now I've learned that there will be a variety of sizes and options or let's call them variations for the light seal and the light seal cushion. These are two separate things. There will be reportedly more variations for the light seal, the thicker part, but again there's going to be different options and what has happened is every time I use Vision Pro I scan my face and based on that it recommends different sizing. Also that uh, let's call it like the headband strap on the back that is also going to be offered in different variations and so what that means is when you buy an Apple Vision Pro it will come with the size that makes sense for you based on how it measures your head and this is again staring at it it, it does similar to kind of like a face ID like scan, but when it does that, it can, it can see not only like the width of your face, but your overall general head shape, and then recommend a light seal, a light seal cushion, and then that back strap for you. So uh, these are new things that I learned when I was, you know, just asking around and playing with the Apple Vision Pro. Okay, now let's talk about some of the new experiences that I got to try because again, this is my third time with the Vision Pro. I, I am constantly asking them all types of questions. We know environments, right? This is a place where Apple basically transports you to these different locales. Uh, I think when they launched the Apple Vision Pro, they showed off Mount Hood, but I got to try out three different new environments. One of them was the moon and it looked completely black and white, but it's not because that's what the moon looks like in space and environment, wraps completely around you. Um, we gotta check out Haleakala in Hawaii and then Yosemite as well. And what I found is they're not revealing the actual you know, resolution of these environments, but they're definitely high fidelity. Uh, they're, they're definitely at least 4K. You can see really finite details. Um, they look incredible. They feel amazing. You can even watch movies in these environments if you want to. But the cool thing about the environments is that I first thought that they were actually photos, but they are a video stream. And what I mean by that is that if you watch some of them, um, in Yosemite, we're at El Capitan and all these, like in the middle of the park. And if you look carefully, the clouds were moving. And I said, wait, the clouds are moving. That's different. I, I went to Mount Hood and in previous demos, Mount Hood was just kind of like a night, like a mid or midday shot. This time, it was raining in Mount Hood and you could see the raindrops coming down. And so depending on maybe the day, you might see the same environment in a different way. Also the environments change depending on the time of day. So whether it's nighttime versus daytime. So there's, there's a lot of variation and a lot of things happening with these environments that Apple is starting to kind of give us nuggets about, but I will say, it is a really cool feature and I think it adds to the ambiance and the, the wonder of why this device is so immersive. In addition to environments, there's also a way to, let's call it, I guess, change the tint of your experience. And what I mean by that is there were different options that basically gave you a different mood. Um, let's say I'm in the living room and I kind of want it to be a little more blue light or I want it to be a little more warm light. You could actually choose tint. So one of them was called morning light, which gave you more of a blue tint. One of them was called spring light. And this was more of a pink kind of lighting kind of to set your mind and mood. And again, this was like sitting in your living room but it had kind of more of a pink tint and you could turn the dial, um, the digital crown dial up here on the top and it would change the intensity of the color of how strong that was in the environment. There was summer light, which was like more of a warm yellow. There were a few others, but this is something new that I saw. So being able to kind of create a mood by, by the tint of color um, that you use was also, it's part of the environment, but I thought that was kind of interesting as well. And another feature that I got to check out with the Apple Vision Pro. I also got to try out typing for the first time using the keyboard that's part of Vision OS. So it is a keyboard. If you've seen pictures, it was revealed um, in some of the at WWDC and some of the developer uh, sessions. So there is a virtual keyboard there. And what you can do is interact with it two different ways. I can either look at the specific letters on the keys and then click, you know, pinch my finger for each letter, or I can actually kind of bring it up with that window bar, bring it up here and then peck away in the air. It makes a haptic sound with each key. But again, you kind of got to take your, t you, I, I was not able to go like da -da 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 as fast as I want to. It was a little more deliberate uh, to take your time. So obviously 
This is still in development. I still think though, because of the way the Vision Pro is, if you're gonna be using it for spatial computing, I right now probably still prefer a physical keyboard. You're able to still see through the headset and type away, but it was the first time um, interacting with Vision Pro and their keyboard and typing in. I would say it was good, it was decent, it wasn't bad, but um, it, you know, I was able to do it. All right, so that's everything that I got experience this third time with the Apple Vision Pro spatial video. I know all of you at home are playing around with it, but hopefully some of my tips and my experience can help guide you in the right direction of how to use it. But spatial video content, immersive content, whether it's your own, whether it's potential Apple TV Plus series, whether it's their new immersive video platform that is coming out um, as time goes on, that is going to easily be one of the killer apps. We still haven't seen a lot around spatial computing yet, but I did get to check out the keyboard for the first time. I learned more about the light seal, the light seal cushion, and that back strap. Those are all gonna come in different variations and will be measured by your face. And then we also had uh, environments. Environments are super cool as I gotta play with them more. And then panoramas is a little bit of a sleeper. Again, all the immersive things is what really stood out and you feel, you feel things when you wear this headset. I've said this multiple times, every time. The tech here is on point. There's nothing like the Apple Vision Pro. It's gonna be up to you to decide, are you willing to spend $3,499 starting? There's still so many questions. There's still so many things that we need to see um, and play around with, but I'm gonna keep you posted right here on my channel with all the latest around Apple, Apple Vision Pro content, and uh, it's been really fun to continue to experience and see how this is evolving, but hey, I know you dig it, because I dig it too. This is, this is cutting edge technology, and it's just fun to be a part of it. I will say one thing to note is, I was told the hardware that I got to use was the same, but this third time, I did not feel the weight as much, and it's kind of weird. I don't know if it depends on the day or how I'm feeling, but the weight of the headset felt pretty decent this time, and I kept it on, I was on it for a good 30, 45 minutes. I do think that when you're really caught up in the moments and experiencing these things, you don't feel the weight as much, but I would say this was the most comfortable um, that I've used the Apple Vision Pro headset. I don't know if I can still use it for two hours straight because I haven't yet, but um, it, felt, it felt pretty good this time. I'm just saying each time it might feel different the next time, but I'm just letting you know along the way all my experiences as I've been going through this journey with the Apple Vision Pro. So uh, there you guys and gals have it. Uh, my third time with the Apple Vision Pro spatial video. Hope you all go have fun with it and really record as much as you can because I think there's going to be some really special moments that come out of it and uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Peace and love.